before I start talking about OS query and all the things that I have learned from Mutas uh, in this regard, let me actually explain why sending logs from Linux to Curator is good, but not good enough. So we have here a clean Ubuntu system, which, uh, which IP, IPv4 address is, ends in 177. The Curator is uh, NC.10, and I have a filter here waiting for logs coming from it. And in order to send logs, all we need to do is modify a file, and uh, we need super user for that. Now, the file we want to edit, I have Vim installed here, is etc rcslog.conf. So we do shift G to go to the end of the file. We type I for insert. We go to the end of the line, hit enter, and basically we say, it, and we did this in another video, send everything to this address, 172.16.60.10 on port, standard syslog port, which is 514. Escape, WQ, to write this out. And now we need to re re restart this, uh, this uh, remote syslog. So we do system control, restart our sys lock and as you see after I did that in the background we can see that we begun to get events into Curator uh, there are just a few of them we need at least 25 by default and let me see I'm lazy and instead of defining I can actually go into the event and look at the identifier and define the actual log manually but let's see if if I can get auto discover to work for me so I send a bunch of them and yep that worked now I got uh, that log source automatically added for me so let's actually clear this and go to that machine and see the standard way of Linux working. If we add a new user to the system, add user, let's call it Mike, actually is all together, add user is a single command, so we click add user Mike, what password, let's put a simple password here, We don't care about the full name, room name, word name, all that. Information is correct, yes. Mike has been created. And as we would expect, we get a message, a log, in Curator indicating that a new user, Mike, has been created. All that is good. And the reason why this works is because there is a log actually created in the system. If we go to bar log, uh, out dot log and we pipe it and we grab for Mike we see that instance in there now in the same way that Windows is uh, set many things in the registry Unix does the same thing in files um, those files have protections but what I want to highlight is when somebody escalate privilege in Unix and change those files, we'll see that logs are not always created. Let's actually go ahead and show you that if we do, let's do vim etc password where all the users are created. We do again Shift G to go to the bottom. We see Mike. We we added Mike in here. Let's actually go ahead and insert a user. 
So let's say that we take this line and we're going to copy it. So we pasted it in here and so I learned this from Mutas. Let's see that we had a user called Mutas. We're going to add it as a privileged user. And we do that by putting here 0, 0. And we're going to make it a root. Like that. Escape. IQ and Mutas has been added as a privileged user. Do we expect to get a new login curator for that? No. As you see, these are the previous logs that we got. With Mike, there's no Mutas being added here. Sure enough, there's one defined in the system because we bypass a mechanism. In fact, if we do this same command looking for Mutas, we won't find him. There was no log created. That is the reason, and that's the prelude to show the value and the importance of OS query. That's the space that OS query fills. And we'll see that this is not only in Linux and FreeBSD, but also on Mac OS and even Windows itself. So that's what OS query is going to help us here. And again, as you see, is available for not just Linux, but also Windows. Of course, Ubuntu we're using here, CentOS, macOS. Now, you may say, well, why do we have this for Windows if we have Sysmon? Sysmon works, I mean, the end result is the same. It gives you extra visibility in what's happening inside Windows. But Windows does it with Sysmon by sending detailed logs that doesn't ordinarily send. OS query is different. By how its name implies, it, perform, it allows you to perform some queries to see what's in those operating systems. And it does it in a smart way because it, it, it is not going to send you the same data again. It has the capability of sending you the delta. You specify, and we'll, we'll see that later in the next uh, video, uh, how, you, how you set this up. But uh, you can tell it how often you want to check for those uh, files, places, tables in the, in the operating system, and give you the delta, what change. And based on that, we can actually detect those things happening. It's actually, this video is getting a little too long for being an introductory one, but I want to show you the breadth of uh, OS query. There are 236 tables currently, and this is an open source project. Uh, that, you know, you can expect that most things will be actually added. And these are all the things that you can actually query on all those systems about what is actually happening. So in the case that what we were actually, the way that we bypass the security of the system, by adding Mutas as a privileged user, uh, you have a table here that is precisely called user. And this is one of the things that with OS query, we can actually check periodically on that Ubuntu system. And when we detect that a new user, Mutas, has been added, get all the attributes so we can actually trigger the right rules the right offenses in Curia, have the rules that trigger on the, on the right offenses. So this is the introductory video. We're going to be building on this concept of OS query in, in the next ones.